Hey Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs podcast and it is a rained out game for the Cubs and Marlins. Schedule changing, but that doesn't change what we do. We do live shows for you. Rain, sleet, snow, tornado. Right at us. Right at us. We're always here. Luke Stuckmeyer, Ryan Herrera, back from the ballpark. Cody Del Mendo made it in his new Jordans. Can't see him, but he's wearing them. Uh, and... Greg Braggs won in, running the ones and twos. We will talk about the big uh, Friday 120 Club coming up tomorrow. Here's the information, though, about today's rainout. First of all, split doubleheader will be played Saturday. The regularly scheduled 120 game, and then this makeup game will be played at 640 on Saturday. The weather does look much, much better yeah. on Saturday. That much I get. I wish I hadn't gone through an hour and a half of traffic to get here before they decided to make that, but they did. So here we are. Just to, taking a second to complain. The yeah, pitching... It took me an hour to get over here from Wrigley, yeah, so I'll, I'll complain with you. The pitching probables. Friday, still, Jamison Tyone, as it was supposed to be tonight. Then Saturday, Assad and Imanaga, not sure which order that will be just yet. I don't know if that's sportsmanship or what they're trying to do, but they're not saying who's going to be game one, who's going to be game two yet, because they don't have to. And Sunday, it will be Kyle Hendricks. So that brings us to our first topic. What should the Cubs do with Kyle Hendricks, with now Tyone back here? Obviously, it's well documented. He hasn't done well in his four starts. He's the only guy left from 2016. We've said that probably shouldn't matter when you're trying to figure out what to do for the season. He's making over 50. Is it 16 million he's making this year? 16 and a half. 16 and a half. That probably shouldn't matter. But here's what does matter. Four starts, 0-2, Cubs have lost three of those four games. His ERA, 12.71. His whip, walks and hits per inning, 2.24, not great. 24 runs in 17 innings, and opponents are batting a robust 388 against him. And uh, also not including that 3.71 home runs per nine. That's a lot. By far yeah. the highest of his career. Like, almost triple what the other one is? No, right. Something like that. Now, now the one thing I will say about this is he's still, th like, his fastball has always been bottom, like, 2% of baseball. Mm -hmm. But that hasn't stopped him from being successful. And he's still throwing that same speed since he's come back from the shoulder injury, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's been built it back up to that. So it's not that his... It's not the normal drop-off you see for a pitcher who's 34 years old. This is all about command. And that's what he's made yeah. his entire career about, is command. He has very small margin for error because he doesn't throw super hard. Well, so how do like, you get the command back? Well, it's that, and it's sequencing is something that he's yes. talked about is just being too predictable. So like, I think one is like, you know, I don't know how much different it would be because obviously he's calling his own pitch or he's been calling his own pitches and I think this last game um, was at Amaya behind the play for him and I think he let him do more of the calling of the pitches um, but like I think sequencing and, and that and being too predictable has also been part of it but the command for sure has been has been an issue like he's, I was it the um, I don't remember who hit the home run but there was like a sinker that was inside but it caught too much of the plate yeah. or it was a little too high in the zone um, and a guy hit for a home run. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that's the big question is how do you get Kyle Hendricks back on track command-wise? Yeah, the command, he's got, he walked too many guys in some of these starts, specifically his last one. I mean, it sounds like the Cubs are kind of keep him in the rotation based off what Tommy Hadovy said on the score the mm -hmm. other day. Um, so, I guess in some ways it doesn't really matter what we think. Uh, but... Uh, you know, I, I haven't I haven't changed my mind. I still think that 
the team will be better if they get him right on top of getting these contributions from these young pitchers. So, um, you know, I guess at this point, the leash is shorter. Um, and, and I guess we'll see who they're going to put into the bullpen because they sent Wesneski back to Iowa, but I assume it's just because the fact yeah, that he wouldn't he be able to pitch, pitch for right a couple days would, anyway. Yeah. So theoretically, he could come back. I, I also think with the doubleheader Saturday, he can at least serve as the twenty seventh man, I believe. So they may still be able to use him at some point this weekend. Okay, but or at I least get on really Saturday. confused because when you option someone, they, they can't come back for. There's a days. minimum, but I think I think serving as a doubleheader. I think I'm yeah. I'm I'm not a hundred percent positive, but I believe. Um, like if say he got option today, but like they want he could just stay in Chicago and could serve as a doubleheader. I think that's how it works. Okay. Um, so like, but outside of that, obviously it would have to go back to he would have to go back to Iowa or be down for however many days after that it would have to be before they could call him back. And up. it's fifteen, right? Fifteen for pitches. Yeah. And 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 it's not. You mentioned the leash. How long is the leash? The question is the leash for what? Like I'm. You can't. You can't just DFA the guy. Like, stop with that nonsense. I, like, I know I know everybody's frustrated by, listen, he comes in, he hurts the bullpen because the game's not, he, he's giving up runs, he's costing you a win, and then he's also costing the bullpen. I understand that. You're not going to DFA him. So, to me, the leash is for what? Sending him to Iowa, faking an injury, saying there is an injury, we need to figure it out, letting him be on the team but making him long relief for now while he's working on things to figure out what's going on. I have faith, and I know I, I'm probably in the minority here. I have faith that Kyle Hendricks, who has shown us many times in his career, that he will be able to figure out mechanically or sequencing what is going on enough to be an effective fourth or fifth starter for this team. And you can't... Pitching, we just talked about... We spent a whole offseason talking about starting depth. Stop thinking of Kyle Hendricks as a number one, a number two, a number three. He's right now, realistically, he's pitching depth until you can figure this out. You don't DFA that guy when all he has to fix is something mechanical. Now, Tyone was trying to fix that last year, but we're talking about Kyle Hendricks. We're talking about the guy that went to Dartmouth and his whole <laughs> career is based on figuring out that slight mechanical adjustment to being effective. I'm not saying he's going to ever go back to 2016 or anything like that, but I think he can still be effective this season. And so for me, I I think the best path, if this next start doesn't work out on Sunday because it looks like they're determined to do it, it's then the phantom injury and go to Iowa. Yeah. I mean, you also have to think about it just – Say say what's <laughs> what's throw the scenario out there that they did DFA him, and then in three weeks someone gets hurt. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You can't <laughs> yeah. do it. You know what I mean? You'd be out of like, your mind. You can't do it. It's yeah. It's it's like it's not. Like and a and, and, pe and the, <laughs> there will be people who are listening right now who are like, well, what about Cade Horton? Well, we don't know when Cade Horton's coming up. Didn't he just make his first start this week? Mm -hmm. uh, in the I guess it like, would be like honestly, we we believe that. Yo, theoretically, Kate Horton will be on this team midseason, June, July, August, somewhere in that three month range, right? What was the what was the the source saying? June first, something like according that. June to, first, according to <laughs> Joey's friend. Yes, <laughs> our uh, sources. I just gave away the source. Yeah, there you All go. right, good job. Well, you don't give away the source. Oh, well, I just yeah. did. Good job. I don't care because I'm. Uh, you, may, I, you might want to care about. No, that. I don't care. No, well, okay, I'll we'll see what Joey says. <laughs> anyway, you messed up. I didn't say like who his friend is. All right, so anyway. The point is He's a friend of mine who's a friend of his. <laughs> the point is is that sure, if another injury happened, they could just emergency call up Kate Horton, but do that do you would you do you want Kate Horton to get promoted because of an injury or do you want him to get promoted because he's ready? Yeah, do you uh, want right. but do you want the flip side somebody looking and say do you want Ben Brown pitching next week or do you want starting next week or do you want Kyle Hendricks? But I'm saying you can you can fix both of those problems if Kyle's not pitching right mm -hmm. with the phantom injury or shifting Ben Brown to a Keegan Thompson type role from two years ago. Yeah, yeah. and it, and with that, I agree. Just because you, 
I don't know how many innings the Cubs think this guy can pitch effectively this year. It's Bert. Hendricks? No. Ben Brown. Ben Brown, right. Well, they have a lot of guys like that that just have never... I know eventually somebody has to do it, but you don't want to ruin four or five young pitchers because you right. think eventually somebody's got to do it. Because it's not... Yeah, so... It, go ahead, It's sorry. uh. <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> uh, you know, it's a... Uh, yeah, like, Horton's going to be on an innings limit this year regardless of if they pick up, like, call him up mid-season or later in the season, whenever. Right. He'll likely be on, on some sort of limit. Like Ben Brown, I'm guessing is on like not as probably not as strict a limit, but a, a limit nonetheless because he's had an injury history. Um, so, but to to Kyle and and I, you like the original question is like what should they do with Kyle Hendricks? I don't look at it as what should they do because it's like to me it's a what will they do? Just knowing how they they operate, what will they do? They're not gonna they're not gonna cut Kyle Hendricks just similar way that they're not gonna cut. You know, Miles Masturbonia, they're not going to cut one of these other guys that, that have options, right? Like they, they, they're not going to go in mid April, especially, again, a guy with the like Kyle, and it's something that we talked about previously as a guy that actually came off a bounce-back season, a good season, not like an all-star season, but a good season uh, in 2023 that showed you he still had something in there. They're not going to cut bait with him in mid-April and lose an arm of debt, just like they're not going to cut bait with someone yet who and uh, whoever it is, they're not they're not cutting bait with all these other guys that could potentially be option could could be depth pieces for them, whether that's in the in the bullpen or in the rotation or in the position player side, or whatever it is, it is it is very early, and you need the depth to get through 162. We talk about it all the time. You can never have enough pitching. You can never have enough pitching. So why and why does why would the front office say you can never have enough pitching and then cut? A, a starting pitcher on April right. ni- April eighteenth, April nineteenth, April twentieth. Like it's not it's not going to happen. No, and and Craig is right in the live YouTube chat, which is the best way to enjoy the experience. Uh, if you want to join us, subscribe to the CHGO Sports YouTube page so you don't miss any shows, and you can join the chat. Listen, he's a man of integrity, but Kyle Hendricks is not going to give you back sixteen million dollars <laughs> because he's having struggles in the first four games. No. He's he's a rabid competitor. So he's going to do earn the 16 and of course there's 16 million reasons not to do it. And there's also the reason that he believes in himself and he's not going to walk away from the challenge. He's going to go look at the video over and over and over and take the bullpens until he believes he's figured it out. He can fix it with Tommy Hadovy or whoever it is. So my answer is if he does what to do with Kyle Hendricks, let him pitch Sunday. If it doesn't, if, if it's another bomb on Sunday now, those first four starts were not all against easy teams, first of all. For a guy that is having struggles and is throwing 89, 88, 90. That, listen, I get it. Lesser teams are coming up. See how he does. See if he makes the adjustment. If he doesn't, then you can go phantom injury, send him to Iowa for a little while and see if he can fix it. I, I think the big thing here, too, that people just aren't really using as like a good thing is that if you leave him in there, then you can move. In my opinion, it would be Assad, just because I think, as we've talked about, the versatility that he has shown, that he showed last year, being able to spot start while also being able to be a long reliever, while also being used as a middle to late inning reliever as well at times last year too. So I think that versatility for him is has great value. So at this point, I'm still leaving Ben Brown in there, even, when, even with – uh, Tyone coming back and moving Assad to the bullpen, which bolsters your bullpen. Steel mm-hmm. makes Steel makes the decisions much tougher. Yes, but let's wait till that happens because, as we yeah. found out in the last ten days, baseball has a way of taking care of things. That's true. Yeah. Well, and then and you said Assad. I, I I actually think it might be Ben Brown who um move. It, it could be Ben Brown who well, moves over to, to the, the Keegan type role. Yeah. From two years yeah. ago, which in, was in way. his stuff crazy plays valuable. Better. His stuff plays better for the bullpen because he has high velocity, gets more swing and miss than Assad, no doubt. Like I'm, I don't disagree, but I would say that Brown has impressed in the rotation more than Assad has. He, he got he went six innings the other day. Assad had I, what Assad did it once against once the Rockies, and then was five and two thirds against the Mariners. Yeah, Dime, whatever yeah. day it was, Diamondbacks. So I mean, um, either. Personally, for me, I'm keeping Brown in there and moving Assad to the bullpen. But if you vice versa, 
whatever. There's I, pros to both scenarios. I do think the the fact that Assad obviously has a, a little bigger catalog of pitches in his arsenal helps him because you can mix with that throughout a start versus like Ben Brown right now, as we've said, he's kind of relying and having success, but relying on mostly two pitches uh, that could work better out of the bullpen. Like, it, the stuff is great, obviously, but it's it's two pitches versus five, six that Assad's actually thrown it's this fair. year. Absolutely. Uh, so Ben Brown's stuff in that sense could play better out of the bullpen in shorter bursts. Not, you know, not six innings, maybe more like three uh, backing up whoever could play better. I, I don't know who, who it would be going into the, into the um, bullpen, but that's another route that could be possible. I think both those routes are possible. I mean, a, I don't, I'm not expecting Jordan Wicks to be option to triple A, but that's another route they could take and keep Brown and uh, Assad yeah. in that rotation. I'm so. still wagering that Kyle Hendricks can be productive for the 2024 Chicago Cubs in some way, form or fashion. Wagering is the key word there, Cody. Absolutely. You can wager with me and Braggs tomorrow at uh, Friday ooh, 120 ooh. Club with uh, prize picks if you want. Uh, prize picks, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. The easiest and most exciting way to play DFS is just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the playoff action. Uh, Bulls last night got the heat tomorrow. Get on the play- mm, playoff, no Jimmy. Uh, playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to the new level during uh, this basketball postseason. Uh, you know, you could do a – the cool thing about prize picks is that you can do just like – an all Chicago entry tomorrow, like say do the Cubs game first and then the Bulls heat game later that night. So to me, I I'm taking anything with Michael Bush tomorrow, the way he's hitting, but uh, maybe hits runs on RBIs. Wait, you're the Cody. Yeah. Is the year the Cody is as well? Kobe white close enough to Cody? No, no. <laughs> Kobe and Cody coming. are not close enough. No, okay, sorry. but it, it's the year of the Cody. Okay. Um, and anything that rhymes with it, but you yeah. could put, okay. you could put Michael Bush, to get a hit or to hit a homer, whatever you want, uh, Cody Bellinger to can you know continue his his comeback this last co- these last couple games, and then do uh, the Bulls game uh, with your entry. Put uh, Kobe White points after can he can he put up another huge game after putting up forty two last yeah. night? Uh, maybe Andre Drummond rebounds. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can you can do it all with Prize Picks. That's the cool thing about Prize Picks is you can just in your entry you can just kind of just put. Do the entire Chicago uh, entry if you want. Do the Sox play tomorrow? Maybe uh, uh, someone to do something for the Sox. I don't know. Or just maybe take a player. Take for the a other go- team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they play in the Royals still, like Bobby Wood Jr. I don't know who they're playing tomorrow off the top of my head. But, yeah, it's uh, that's what makes it fun. So, uh, anyway. Where oh, I lost my – oh, here we go. Go to prizepix.com. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, prizepix.com slash CHGO and use code CHGO for the first deposit matchup to $100. That's prizepix.com slash CHGO. And use code CHGO. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Scroll down too far. Yeah, I was going to say, we almost had to start ad in there. <laughs> Give me the time. Um, no, I, you know, I I was thinking about it, and obviously the rain out, or the, the yeah, the rain out today postponed to Saturday. Seeing some of the empty seats in Wrigley while I was sit, sitting up in the press box for a little bit today. Um, and I was wondering, like, or I was thinking back to like when I used to go, um, not obviously in the press box, like used to go sit in seats and stuff. And like back in the day, not knowing what the view of the seat was right. going to be. And I don't know how I ever lasted like that, but like think, think everything that game time is here and game time gives you that ability. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Again, now that there's the rain out, uh, and the today's game Thursday is now on Saturday. Friday is now the series opener for this Cubs Marlins. Friday 120 Club obviously Ooh. is a big thing, but um, if you're just going to the game, you want to you want to go check out on a Friday afternoon. Uh, I'm looking at Game Time right now. Uh, Marlins at Cubs 120 p.m. start. And let me tell you, the deals on here, you, you can't find them anywhere else. It's incredible. 
Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Game Time is obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHGO for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHGO for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Yeah, super chat in here from Chandler. Ooh, I think Chandler. First time I've seen this name in our YouTube chat, to be honest with you. So thank you, Chandler, for being here. It says, is Hendrix overshadowing the messy arm barn? I love that he called it the arm barn. Oh, the barn. arm barn. I forgot yeah. about that. Um, the arm barn. I, to answer this question is simply as possible. I, I think that it's not overshadowing the bullpen. It's just the fact that the bullpen has ha- been up and down because the starters haven't been able to go deep enough. So, and and that includes that. Hendricks. So I think it's a little bit of both to answer your question. Uh, the, the most simple way possible Chandler, but um, you know, like that's why I said that if, if the, if we're going to, which we know they will trying to get Hendricks, right adding Assad or Brown to the bullpen will right. will benefit. Trick, trickle down effect will yeah. impact both. Yeah. Um, and so in addition to the move with Tyone coming back to play, also Patrick Wisdom is going to get his first look with the Cubs. That means Wesneski and Master Boney were sent down to Iowa. Now, I wouldn't read too much into this, the idea of sending Wesneski down because he just went four-plus innings, and you weren't going to throw him for a couple days anyways. Now, I would be surprised... If he's not back here pretty quickly based on that yeah. based on that outing, the way that um, Craig Council was talking about it after the game mm-hmm. and players were talking about it after the game, the, the funniest part is that he found out he was being sent was that his roommate, Matt Mervis, in Iowa, yeah. had to be wake him up at like 4 mm-hmm. in the morning or something, be like, dude, check your phone. Mm-hmm. Dude, check <laughs> your messages. And then he had to run to the ballpark to get his stuff and almost missed his connecting flight. Flight he flew out at like four a.m., so he had like no sleep. So, um, and then went out there and shoved. I it. I, I think <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he showed the Cubs a little something, which is impressive to see. I also don't have a problem with Master Boney being the guy. So my bigger question is, what do you do with Wisdom now? Well, well, he's definitely um, gonna be a bench bat. Yeah, power bat. yeah. So. This but you're not, not trying to play him at third. Uh, no, I, you still would, going? You still going to Madrigal at third? Oh my god! Well, you right, know, we know Morel at third. You're think, giving me a headache. Man. I think with Morel <laughs> and Madrigal both healthy and on the major league roster, wisdom is the third in line for third base work. Would be my guess. Um, I know he's been part of that first base group more uh, during spring. Now Garrett Cooper's also there, and obviously Michael Bush is is having a really good last 11, 12 games, whatever it's been. Mm-hmm. Um, Wisdom is, is going to be obviously more of a role player, part-time player, and uh, I could see him DHing. I think the Marlins have three lefties coming up this weekend I was uh, say, in the series. A- so. AJ Puck or Puke, whatever you, you want to say Puck. his name. He's a lefty. I was, yeah, Ryan Weathers I, on Sunday, yeah. also a lefty. Yeah. So he when alternates I, with the Coop Troop. It yeah. could be that. You could have... You could have um, you know, whether you want to keep Michael Bush or not, you could have Wisdom DH and, like, either Cooper or Bush is playing first base. Like, sure. Or I, I know Wisdom obviously has some uh, experience in the outfield. I'm not saying to play him in right field over Canario, but it's possible that could happen. Oof. Um, Oof. But I will say, like, having his bat in there against lefties, we seen what he we saw what he did in the second half last season. We don't need to keep bringing up all the stats that we've talked about enough this offseason mm-hmm. about why he has a role on this roster. Uh but him, the, the I don't think anyone on this team has the power that like, the raw power that he brings. Like Morel, maybe maybe, Morel. maybe uh, challenges that. But like mm, we've right. seen Patrick Wisdom, and over the last three years since he got that call up in twenty one, just not even on the Cubs, but across Major League Baseball, where he kind of ranks and 
home runs per at bat or just home runs in general. Like it, it, he's up there. So I think power wise, he brings probably more power than anyone on the team uh, and anyone else on the team has. Um, so that's, that's valuable. And whether that's starting against a soft tossing lefty as a DH or whatever, or you're bringing him uh, off the bench in a matchup that fits what he, you know, what, what works best for him. That's a valuable bat you could have because it is, power that can change the game with one swing. So I think that's that you're looking at is that's the role you have for him now mm-hmm. for sure. But then also like moving forward, that's, that's because we saw it work successfully in the second half last season. That's the kind of role that he probably profiles for this Cubs team right now. Yeah. I mean, we've said it before. He really struggles with the high heat, right? That high fastball. Um, so the matchup definitely uh, is, is important for him. And he's never going to be a guy that when he does start, that's going to make it through the entire game. Because when I mentioned the high fastball, all these guys coming out of the bullpen being able to throw almost 100 miles per hour, they get, like, David Ross was smart enough to to do that last year, uh, getting him out of the game after, like, two at-bats. Uh, I, I feel like Craig Council will do that as well. So, um, I think against lefties, I, even against righties, some, it just depends on the matchup. But, um I think that DH first base are more likely to be where you see him. Um, Michael Bush really, like I said yesterday, impressed me against the lefties. A lot, you know this uh, this against the Diamondbacks. I'm so, not taking him. So off he's anything. he's earning some some run mm-hmm. against lefties yeah. for sure. So he's he's not going to be playing first base anytime soon, in my opinion. Um, but DH he provides exactly what your DH is. You want your DH to be, which is just that raw power that Ryan mentioned. Um, you know, I I would rather play. I honestly would rather play Magical at third than Wisdom as well. Even though Magic or even though Wisdom fits the what you want at third base, mm-hmm. a power bat. Uh, but again, Patrick Wisdom, I doubt he's ever going to be in a game late. I really do. So I like him. Unless it's a pinch hit. Yeah, unless like, it's a pinch hit opportunity. You're, you're down then, to your final out. You need a sure. home run. Yes. I'd march him out there. Sure. But, again, say the say it's a tie game in the fifth inning and or sixth inning even, and the other team you know takes their starter out, Wisdom's coming up, and they got some guy coming in that throws mm-hmm. upper 90s fastballs, you know? Like, I'm – I feel like they're going to be pinch hitting for count, uh, for wisdom a lot more in those situations than some might expect. So, uh, it, and I say that because that's what they did last year, and it it was a pretty smart, at least in the second half of last year, right? Once they got C- Candelario and um, you know some of these other guys that came up and helped. So, that's that's kind of how I envision him to be used. Um, it wasn't really surprising that Master Boney went to Iowa because him and Madrigal are the same player, except one hits lefty and one hits righty. To me, it never made sense that both of them were on the roster. Um, I wish they would have left Master Boney in Iowa to start the year so he could get consistent at bats. Um, but it is what it is. And, you know, I mean – we're here now, and they're eleven and seven. So I'm not really even complaining about it, but it just never made sense to me. So to me, when when people saw on Cubs Twitter, uh, the one of the biggest Cubs fans uh, that's out there, I forget I forget how to say her last name, but her name is Sam. She's always the older lady that sits outside by like where the players come in and takes pictures. Uh-huh. That's how it like surfaced the web. Is she took a picture of Patrick Wisdom coming into um, the ballpark today and. People started speculating, like, oh, who's going down? I was like, well, it's pretty obvious here. <laughs> it's either going to be magical or it's going to be Master Boney. And, and we you're knew, okay with it being Master Boney. Yeah, as much as I as much as much I think. You're a stan. Yeah, as much as I am a stan, and as much as I'd rather have the left-handed bat than Madrigal's uh, ground balls to, sh- to, to shortstop or second base, um, yes, it made sense. It, it was pretty clear just because they gave Madrigal more opportunity anyway, you know? And, yeah. and and I gave credit where credit is due. He he had played well in a certain amount of games uh, at home before they went on the road trip. They didn't even need him on the road trip as much because Morrell played a really solid yeah. def, uh, played really solid defense. Yeah. So yeah. Council g- gained some confidence in him. Yeah, so I think that's also part of it too is the yeah. the fact that Madrigal does play solid defense at third base, not mm. amazing defense, but he's a solid defensive third baseman. Whereas like Mastroboni obviously liked the versatility that he had, mm-hmm. but 
if you're optioning Madrigal, then either Master Bonnie or Wisdom are then your backup third baseman, and you, you don't know if you really love that or not. So right. I think part of it was keeping a steady defensive third baseman there. I, we, we, we've talked about Morel looked improved or like he was progressing at third base over the last week or so, sure. week and a half on, on the road trip. But to have a guy that that proved he could play a solid third base is probably why is probably plays into why uh, you want to keep him around at least for now. We don't uh, important question. We don't do a postponed game beer bat chug, do we? We don't. We don't do a rain out. No, no. I just double it's a check. sacred I just thing. It's a I, sacred I wasn't sure. Well, you don't like having fun. Damn. You don't like Whoa. having fun. Okay. Maybe Braggs uh, wants to do it. Braggs can do it. It can be his thing. It ain't oh, gonna be my thing. Just <laughs> talked yourself <laughs> into a corner, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I had to open my big mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I had to open my big mouth. Oh, yeah. Some beers say they are brewed for baseball, but only Blue Moon is brewed by baseball. Beer and baseball just go together, and no beer goes better than the one that was literally born in a ballpark. Blue Moon was created at Coors Field in Denver. It's the natural choice for opening day and actually just all season long. Now, up until the rain started, which I just heard it a few minutes ago, the weather had been screaming this week, hey, man, give me a blue moon. But you know what? When it's raining, I like a blue moon then, too. Looks like it's going to be nice. I think you're going to have great weather in the 120 Club coming up tomorrow. Nothing beats watching baseball or lounging by the pool with an ice-cold blue moon. Brewed by baseball to give you a dose of nostalgia and get you excited for a whole season, a beer this good only comes around once in a blue moon, but you can enjoy it all season long. Bring the ballpark to you with Blue Moon Belgian-style weed ale. It's one of a kind every time. Get Blue Moon delivered by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash chgo to see your delivery options. That is get.bluemoonbeer.com slash chgo. Blue Moon, made brighter, celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And drive home. A winner this April after visiting our partner, Ray Chevrolet. They're sharing their best offers of the year. Make your way to Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 in Fox Lake to join in on the savings. As one of the top-selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest Chevy inventories. Plus, you'll be able to find the perfect tailgate vehicle. For a limited time, they're offering 0% financing for 72 months on new Silverado's with over 100 of them to choose from. And to top it all off, they're pricing over 125 vehicles under 20 grand. Seriously, guys, can you get pricing more affordable than this? The answer is no. Get a free oil change at Ray Chevrolet and Fox Lake when you mention us, CHGO, free oil change. All you need to do is mention CHGO when scheduling the oil change. Start off the year right and schedule it by April 30th. Visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. A stunning stat I heard. Are you ready for it? Am I going to be stunned? A stunning stat I heard. And I want to know if you're buying it. Big Dave's in the house, by the way. If you take away the three blown saves the Cubs have had from Adbert Alzali Mm -hmm. this season... And he's not the only reason. I'm just saying, if you subtract those three blown saves, or if you want to subtract three starts from Kyle Hendricks, whatever you want to do, take away the three blown saves, the Cubs would have the best record in baseball right now. Is one of those three saves the eight to nothing lead they had that they blew against the Padres? Uh, Is that considered? No, that wasn't his blown save, right? I don't. Was it a blown save at all? He gave up the lead in the eighth inning. He came in. I don't know if that's considered a save opportunity. Boy, that's a good question. I I, I just know he has three blown saves. I'm just saying, if you flip (laughs) the three blown saves, which is, I believe, three home runs. Take away the three home runs. The Cubs would have the. They'd go from where they are now, which isn't bad, Mm -hmm. to the best record in baseball. Now, what are the ones he blew? You said, are we buying that? Are you buying the hype that? The Cubs are that close to having the best record in baseball. So, I mean, so blown, actually, it's true. Yeah, so blown saves by Adbert this year, one against the Dodgers on April 5th, and then April 13th and April 14th in Seattle were his blown okay. saves. Um, April 5th? Is that, it was a Dodgers that was the game. Friday game, right? Oh, wait, I looked at the wrong one. It was like April, 8th, April 8th April in San 8th. Diego. Sorry okay. about that. I was like, he didn't blow Wait, then game. I was completely wrong. I was looking at the wrong category. Sorry, April 8th in San Diego, March 28th against Texas, which is the opening day. I do remember okay. that one. And then so yes, one of Arizona. those is blowing I, the eight to nothing. I was looking at 
Looking at the wrong category. My apologies. Uh, so take away those, take away those three mm-hmm. outings from Al's lie. Cubs would have the best record in baseball. Do you believe the hype? To no, I don't believe the hype. <laughs> but also, like it's sh- it's tech. It, to me, it's two blown saves because he should have never had to been used in the eight not, when you led eight to zero. Okay, he should have never Fair. had to been used in that game. All right. So as much he gave it up, we all knew that he was probably going to give it up anyway, just based on the, the momentum, momentum of yeah. that game alone. All right. So I'm. I'm not necessarily taking away the criticism, but I'm taking away the actual quote unquote blown save there. All right. Uh, am I buying the hype? No, because this team, like if they enter the playoffs tomorrow, I just, I don't see, I don't see much happening for them. And that's okay because the playoffs aren't starting tomorrow. No, they're but not. We know that this team could get better if, if they can not only tread wa- water through May, um, and then hopefully by the time they're healthy, they can really t- start playing even better baseball and then go into the trade deadline and maybe make a couple acquisitions. Uh, like I think a lot of us believe they could, um, you know, this team could look a lot different in August and September. So, and it, as we saw last year, with the diamondbacks, all it is about, it really is all about how you're playing at the right time. The Cubs are playing good baseball right now. All things considered, no doubt, but I think we're all a little like I wouldn't want to enter the playoffs with the how taxed the bullpen is right now and where your starting rotation is. And without Steele, without Tyone, without Mary yeah. So if, yeah. again, to, to answer your that. question, no, I'm not buying the hype, but it's awesome to hear that they have one of the best records in the league with all these injuries and everything. Yeah. Well, they, <laughs> so wait, they would be they're eleven and seven right now, right? Yes, is that correct. So they would be fourteen and four. Fourteen and four. I don't know if the, uh, well, so one, I'm, the reason I like don't love that is because there's also games that they won that they probably shouldn't have when there's so, and so other that, teams have the same situation well, too so, so so it's like those those eventually yeah. balance out what i will say is they're 11 and 7 that's 18 games into the season 162 game season you average that out you keep going 11 and 7 every 18 games you'd end up with 99 wins mm-hmm. uh i don't know if they're 99 wins good but that does show you that even with all the stuff that's happened in the first 18 games that we come to, we come out of the chat uh, on our post game shows and people are, are angry and whatever like they're on pace to be a 99 win team which I think like it, it, that was more than they won in 2015 it was a, only a few games less than what they won in 2016 I don't think they're that but the, is this was still a good start to the year for the Cubs team especially when you consider the injuries the nine game road trip um it, it, it still translated into a good start to the year. Could it have been better? Sure. Could it also have been worse? It could have all. It could have. So, um, yeah, I don't. I don't know that. So as far as buying that, like, I don't think. That, I don't think this is the best team in baseball. I do think it is a good team that should win the division. That should be in the playoffs and could make some noise in the playoffs. So, so just the start that they've had. Is showing me that that yes, it may be a bumpy road. Yes, things are still going to have to go right for them, and you know, dealing with injuries is going to be hard, and it's going to lead to some ups and downs the way that it has. But it's still an overall good team with good depth that can get that can get itself into the playoffs. Even one month doesn't tell you a whole lot about a baseball team, but I think what we've seen from this start should tell us that the Cubs are much closer to being a very good baseball team than they are to being a very bad baseball team. Like, they've they've transitioned over that bridge from this team's going to lose 100 games to this team. They're, to me, they're, they're a team that's much closer to being able to win 100 games than they are lose 100 games. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, wait, wait. But, <laughs> yeah, they, oh, but, yeah. they, but they've, cro- they've crossed way over that, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. not just from where are they. Like, I'm expecting this team to be in the postseason. Just yeah. based off, off what I've seen. Remember, they also don't have Seiya Suzuki right now. Yeah, yeah. Out. It, all you need is some guys to get healthy. Yeah. And even if all of them don't get healthy, the reinforcements that have been coming up seem to be doing their job. It's not a perfect baseball team. The right. bullpen hasn't been perfect. The starters haven't been perfect. The defense hasn't been perfect. A lot of teams can say that, mm-hmm. you know, less than a month like, into this season. I feel like fans kind of forget to like, well, maybe not necessarily forget, but just kind of, they, they pay attention to the Cubs, and maybe they aren't paying nearly as much attention to other teams around the league. I know? think my prediction, uh, you know, I don't, want, I don't want to tell you how to come, but I think my prediction of 90 wins, I'm a little more confident in that than I was 
when I made the prediction before the season. Yeah, because the only reason you made that prediction was because you said that you graduated college. High, high school. school. High school in, in 1990. That's correct. That is oh, literally the only reason. Listen. And then we said he started getting The reasons are not important. Checks What's factual is I predicted 83 last year and it happened. I said, I mean. It doesn't we matter how I got there. To you. We were all pretty high. Thank you, Brad. I said you should come back more often. Big of you. I, I think said, I said 87 also. maybe. And, and humble someone, of me too. <laughs> Very I, humble. I think I said 87 and then someone's like, oh, leave it to Ryan. Like, of course, Ryan's the Debbie Downer. I'm like, I'm picking them to win six games, be six games over 500. Yeah. I still pick them to win the division. So it's like. Whatever, eighty-seven wins. Why they get in the either division. way, we were why all you, pretty. Why do you hate the Cubs, right? In two thousand seven, they won eighty-seven games and got and won the division too. So what, I, I said eighty-seven too. Yeah. <laughs> Screw you, Bray. I have more hope in the Cubs than I do in mankind. By the way, on the way here, <laughs> not. To I get thought off you were talking here. about the wrestler mankind. No, oh, no. Yeah. Do you know of the Man wrestler? Foley, baby. Do you Man know Joe. of the wrestler mankind? I know the name, but I don't know Mick, what he looks Mick like. Foley. Mick Foley. Mick Foley. Okay, no, I don't know. Okay, never mind. Well, <laughs> that didn't help. So uh, that I can tell you one thing. Made it worse. Cactus Jack. He's got a lot of riz. Dude he's got love. a lot of riz. Yeah. I know so that much. <laughs> when he was dude love. He's, he's not he sus, was, but he's got a lot of riz. When he was dude love, a lot of riz. A lot of riz. Oh, yeah. I'm coming up to Kennedy, and there's an ambulance clearly coming behind us. I'm in the left lane. I start trying to get people to move over to the right. Is there not all, does this not happen all the time? Nobody wants to get over, and it's like, if it was your family member up in whatever is going ahead, wouldn't you want that? ambulance to get there then get your tail over to the right then as soon as the ambulance passes this is one of my all-time pet peeves why is there always the car behind you that wants to race forward and now pick up six spots in line why can't you just be a human being why do you have to take advantage of me? like this is going to get me three spots closer we're going four miles an hour man yeah you're an idiot <laughs> <laughs> Okay, rant now. over. There's, I feel better about that. Why do you, why do you, for the day, why do you think guys? I don't live in the suburbs anymore? That's right. <laughs> now, one thing that I failed to mention is the beauty of this rain out and two games on Saturday is the weather's going to be nice on Saturday. But tomorrow, the weather is going to be sunny. And Braggs and Cody, if you don't know this, the Friday 120 Club is back in session tomorrow. Oh, yeah. 10 baby. o'clock in the morning. Get your tail over to Murphy's. More importantly, go to game time. Get your bleacher seat first. I Just saw, a bleacher seat. Or you can get a ticket anywhere. But if you want to hang with the 120 club, yeah. you're going to want to get a bleacher seat. I saw Nick in the chat said that, uh, well, not well. he's in the chat, but and he just became a diehard recently. I saw him in the Discord earlier. Um, but he tweeted at me that he got his, his shirt. So I expect to see him nice. tomorrow. So, yeah, and Bragg's made a new sign. It was all based off an idea that I told him, I'm assuming. So, it was a big hit. Did you make the sign? You want to see it? Did you it's, make the oh, sign? Oh, you're gonna, no, you're gonna debut the sign now? No, no, well, no, no we haven't no, no, colored no. it yet. Braggs yeah, has no, been no. over there don't like d- art class. D- he came in, he was very upset that the, the show was gonna be earlier because he was over there with his crayons. <laughs> this is this is great I, for the podcast people can that can't. We're gonna have to describe it. the whole thing. Ryan's you been can't tinkered. read it. You can't read you can't it. It's read all it. yeah. You can't. You can't see it. That's that's a, show. that's a that's a great sign, Braggs. That a white board you're bringing to the ball game. <laughs> I can't even. Read well, now it. now you can't read it. This is ridiculous. Good job, Braggs. <laughs> you want to tell us what it says? No, we're gonna. No, no, no. no. Okay, well, Dave, wait, well, you need to color. You realize what? you're gonna have to color that in for anybody able to. <laughs> but it's not colored in. He's got a penciled out yeah. drawing of some letters. No color. Yeah, it's it's no a statement, in. just no like color. the statements that we made. For if we turn time. the lights off, it's not. You can't see it then either. Yeah, because his true. daughter is going to color it tonight. Like she well, we were going to do a better we job were coloring color it tonight during the Cubs podcast. game that got rained out. Ah, we were, and we got okay. screwed, Cody. Mm, okay. We got screwed. Were you, gonna, were you guys because gonna I do? was excited for Imanaga tomorrow, and now we get. Freaking Jamison Tyone, who better not screw up our undefeated streak of one and zero. Way to bring the negativity to the podcast. Well, oh, yeah. I was excited yeah. for Shota. I was too, admittedly. Since was I there going to be it. any red on the sign where you're going to alternate like blue, red, blue, red? Because if you do the red, I feel like you guys should do it in blood. You know, prick a <laughs> finger, and, and each letter should be like painted with blood. Oh my god! If you're really <laughs> big time, not you don't agree, Ryan. Sorry, I was uh, he reading blacked the chat. out a little bit. He was reading uh, the chat. Well, okay, I just wanted like someone was asking about the the makeup game, and some people are confused. The makeup game is Saturday. Yeah. It's Saturday. not a double header right. Friday. No, 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 no. Tomorrow, double header Saturday. What was your favorite part of the first Friday One Twenty Club? Because it was a big success. The friends we made along the way. The dub. The W. Yeah. The dub. The, dub. Bush, the weather the was nice. Game. Michael Bush. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. 
Meeting uh, the booing, who was the pitcher's the booing, uh, mother? The, booing Otani. Oh, yeah, meeting Bobby Miller's Bobby family. Bobby Miller's yeah. family at Murphy's. Yeah, yeah. They were quite lovely. They were scared and, and, of and us I, at first. I didn't boo well, Otani, but witnessing everyone boo Otani was pretty fun. It was a great time. And the weather turned out to be way better than we expected, so I'm hoping the same thing happens tomorrow. So, yeah. Yeah, so Frank uh, is asking in the chat how you become a diehard. If you go to allchgo.com slash diehard... Or hit the or, die, or if you just go to the regular or page hit the, the die, die hard tab, tab on the mm-hmm. website, mm-hmm. you can go and and sign up. You get a free shirt right out the gate. Yeah, look, um, uh, Gerard just got his renewal. So yeah, when you yeah, renew, Gerard. you I get a die hard. Get discounts on every shirt yeah. going forward. You get discounts on our events. You get this mugs, all, any merch. Yeah, we got our draft party coming up here for. Um, Bears. You know, for the Bears, Bears here. So if you if you become a diehard, you can come out next Friday night. In. Yeah, get the Bears in. Get the Bears well, in. Well, hey, this is an us. This is an us thing. Okay? You're right. You're right. It's an us. I'll be thing. there. 25th. I'll be there. All right. Yeah. Friday night. So you can get discounts on events and you get exclusive content. You know, from these guys at CHGO Cubs and all the teams here at CHGO Sports, Frank. You didn't hear this, probably, Braggs. Um, I hear nothing. I only listen in to yesterday's my own podcast. Thoughts. One of our loyal sickos and diehards out there in the in live YouTube chat said they took their diehard card and got a free donut at Do Right. Oh yeah, there you go. Makes sense. There you go. I believe we didn't it. lie to y'all. No, Frank says want, he's from Buffalo, and, and that's okay. Don't let the facts. Get Frank, away there's a lot story, of good uh, advantages to being a diehard, even if you don't live in the area. I promise. So um, jump on board. It's a great way to yeah. support what we do, and these guys do. These guys are great. Yeah, nobody covers. Big of you better. to say, Braggs. Well, big of you. Uh, Niran says, "What will be Michael Bush's stick? Will fans dress up as bushes?" Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 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 Uh, that could get messy. That could get, uh, messy. <laughs> get real messy. I mean, do we get in trouble again? I mean, we slightly got in trouble for our first signage. I don't. So well, don't do mention a, what it said. So if we have a sign that says like "We love Bush." B U S C H. Are we going to get in trouble for that? I doubt. Who'd you get in trouble from? The bosses or from the Cubs? (laughs) If anything, Joe from Avia shirts will just give us one of (laughs) his. his I think there's. I've said there at the very least you should do a Friday 120 club really really big. Uh Maybe a letter for each person because the broadcast will put that stuff on and be like, "Boog, you part of the Friday 120 club?" You think so? Yeah, I do. Okay. We got on the broadcast like on the first one. So did we? We did, and then we also ended up on baseball Reddit. Very upset. I don't fans. know what it was. I, I well, I they saw. They put our signs on on marquee. That they did. Cool. They did. Yeah. Nice. And cool. then I worked hard on coloring that roulette you, man. table. Yeah. <laughs> don't take the credit away from your daughter. <laughs> she did. She. Too. I mean, that's the reason it got on TV. And I will say, when we saw Cody doing singing "Go Cubs Go" and getting the crowd going. Rags, you were like checking your phone or he something. Was. So don't he be was. looking down too much at the phone to see. Oh my well, God, the am content, I on? Am I on? The content, How's my content? How are my numbers? Never sleeps. <laughs> content never sleeps. You gotta get it out at uh-huh. the perfect time, right? So, uh, yeah, no, should be a good time tomorrow. Looking yeah. forward to seeing hopefully some new faces. Uh, Sarah and Emma will be there too, and uh, yeah, man, like it's to me. To me, if like you, if you're like on the like trying to decide to go or whatever to me is it's just like going to hang out with you know other cubs fans at a game you know like that's we're just trying to do something in community like this is something that we've been wanting to do for the last two years and just didn't really have the resources to be able to do it and now we do and we want to like we want to just keep building the community keep building the community like that's what chu has always been about is about uh you know being like Fans first and like getting to know people who listen or watch the show. And like, that's, that's honestly really about it in terms of like what the Friday One Twenty club is, is just hanging out with other Cubs fans. So if you want to go to the game tomorrow and you don't, you don't necessarily have someone to go with, then like come hang out with us. Cause like, we're very welcoming. We want to meet you. <laughs> like, show will be how how about a sign that says right field is sus. Ooh. No, I just like right field sucks. <laughs> right field is sus. Left field left has field right ribs. Ribs. I was going to say that. Left field right has field ribs. sus. Right, right field, field sus. Right field sus. Huh? That's great. That puts a newer spin on it. it. You know, I don't. You guys don't know how to do this, but you kind of modernize things. Um, Make them younger. So, what will we do? So the kids you? know what you're talking about. What will we do without you, Luke? So before we go, obviously it's the second Friday 120 Club, but it's also Jameson Town's first start of mm. the year. What are we expecting from Tyone tomorrow? I'm We're hoping for, I guess. Or, or I guess I'm optimistic way. for five innings. That's what I was because saying. I don't minimum know if, five innings. Yeah, and I know that there might be a pitch count on there, but 
this Marlins offense stinks. So far this year, it's stunk, right? So I'm hopeful that this is going to be a nice little, like, easy one for Tyone to get in and hopefully build off moving forward against some tougher competition. But I'm ho- I'm hopeful for five innings tomorrow since he hasn't pitched yet, and I know he's he made a couple rehab starts, but I know he didn't he didn't go out there and throw 100 pitches. So you know I'm yeah. expecting 70, 80 pitches maybe. Is that is that fair? I think it's fair. Yeah. yeah, no, I if he can get with again assuming a a pitch count, I know he there was like I forgot where it came from, but that was he was maybe ready to go a little earlier, but they just held him back a little bit mm-hmm. longer or something like that. I, I don't remember where I heard that or read that, but that might have been a thing. So depending how he hasn't built up, obviously, to the full starter's workload, but depending on what the pitch count is, if he could still – if he could could give you five innings, that's, that's – Three pretty, runs or less. That's a pretty good start for, for his first start yeah. of the year. And, again, as we've talked about with Tyone, just the last year's ups and downs – to start off on the right foot would be a pretty good sign from him. Yeah, doesn't have to be yeah, a going to be a no hitter, or eight eight inning shutout. Like a, that would be great for the Cubs, obviously. But um, if he if he gives you five innings, a couple runs at, at most, and gives them puts them in a chance where they could still win, that's that's huge. Yeah. Uh, Niren's, uh idea for Bush. I, I don't think we. Need I'm that. not going to read it, but it, I just that. want to acknowledge no. that I like it, <laughs> Niren. I want to acknowledge it. All right. Niren, so, you have cr- to see it. Credit yeah. to you. You have to see it. Yeah. You have to see it. <laughs> also, Lucas in the chat asked how you're so old and don't know who mankind is. Well, I don't really. I stopped following wrestling after Hulk Hogan was pretty much done. I, even not. Maybe 10. So yeah, well, 10, 42 was, years ago, so I stopped watching if wrestling. You're referring, I just wasn't. Okay. Well, mankind was around when Hulk Hogan was at his peak. Yeah. You know, and I, maybe not. I've never been a NWO, huge. Hogan. I've never been a NWO, huge. Okay. I mean, I knew Macho Man, Lady Elizabeth. Yeah. That's early. Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Junkyard Dog. Right. Yeah. After that, I, I knew, I knew again. the guy from uh, MTV. The Miz or whatever. I oh. knew him on <laughs> MTV before. World? Yeah, right. I knew him before in the real world more than I know him from wrestling. <laughs> and and now I've met and know uh, uh, CM Punk. Nice guy. So I've oh, seen yeah. him wrestle well, when and I've go, talked to the guy, guy but well, I know him. When you go home show. tonight, Luke, on a rainout night, watch Mankind versus Undertaker, Undertaker, Hell in a Cell. Just, I know the Undertaker. The ring, right? Okay, well, he I know fought, the Undertaker. 1998 King of the Ring. Do it. Undertaker in Hell in a Cell. Cage match. It's a great match. Just I know Stone it. Cold Steve Austin. I know... Um, I'll send you the link. Shawn Michaels. On YouTube. Yeah, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, yeah. All right. Okay, anyways. Thanks for checking <laughs> out. <laughs> you got your bit of wrestling today, guys. <laughs> well, well, now Corey's mad he didn't come in. We yeah. haven't done it on the show in a while. Rowdy Roddy Piper. I do remember him, too. This yeah. is uh, this is the uh, rain out game. Podcast. Rowdy Roddy Piper <laughs> reminds me a lot of Mike North. Look, He looks like Mike North a little bit. A little bit. Anyways, thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast. Friday 120 Club meets 10 a.m. Murphy's Bleachers on Friday. Be there with your bleacher ticket. And no post Presented by Circa. Yeah, presented by Circa. No post game tomorrow or Saturday. But Corey and Brennan on Sunday. But post game beverages at almost home. Post game beverages. I just want to. Presented by Circa. Recently, like over the last couple weeks, we've been getting. I've been getting, and CHGO Cubs have been getting tweets of asking. Are post we game. doing a post game? And I'm like, right, right. I feel bad. That's I'm why like, we're doing the Friday 120 Club. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's a trade off. Yeah. We used to do the, yeah. the the post game. Now we're like, we'd like to be with the people. Yeah. Part of the oh, people. Yeah. We but are the people. Again, series we recap. Are the world. Corey and Brendan on Sunday. People. And recently I've been joining them. And I think I have to keep doing so if they keep winning on Sunday. Wins. Yeah. They, they're undefeated on Sunday. A lot more year. Sunday wins. And this they year lost so many games on Sundays last year. So, like. We have to keep that trend going if they win on Sunday. This show will be less than one hour. Bring your Riz to Murphy's tomorrow <laughs> and your 120 Club too. Thanks Don't for watching sus. and fly the W. <laughs> oh my God. We all city like the mayor.